everyone, welcome to this video. On my channel, I analyze song lyrics very in depth through the lens of literary analysis. Usually I analyze the entirety of a song, looking at things like diction, connotation, metaphors, etc. However, today we're doing something a little bit different. You guys submitted some of your favorite lyrics for me to analyze. Instead of looking at the whole song, I'm going to be focusing on just the lyrics you sent in. If the lyrics are from a song that I'm not familiar with, I'm not going to be listening to the song or doing any sort of research. Let's begin. Mess of a dreamer with the nerve to adore you. This is from the song Cold As You by Taylor Swift. This is from her first album, Self Titled. If you haven't looked around my channel, you don't know this yet. I love Taylor Swift, so I know this song really well. The diction here, the word mess is very interesting. When I think of the word mess, I think of something that's kind of chaotic as something that's you know, obviously disorganized. When I look at the word dreamer, I think of someone who daydreams a lot. They kind of daydream in an excessive way, maybe. Like if someone introduces themselves as a dreamer, I feel like they would spend a lot of time thinking about what ifs, romanticizing possible scenarios. Perhaps a dreamer is someone who can't really be brought back down to earth super easily. The fact that being a dreamer here is described as a mess is significant because usually when you think of someone like dreaming or daydreaming about something, it has a very like ethereal and cute quality to it. However, when you're a mess of a dreamer, I would think of like the etherealness being watercolors that are muddled together to create like one really dark color, like a muddled color. This is giving me like watercolor eyes vibes by Lana Del Rey. I analyzed that song. I will link it down below for you. I also want to look at the word nerve and adore and then at the end I want to kind of put that all together. If someone has the nerve to do something, it's kind of like they had the audacity to do something. It takes like courage to do something when you have nerve to do it. I actually want to look up the word adore. It's described as worshiping something. So it's like a very intense sort of feeling. When you worship something, you're putting it on a pedestal. It's kind of like that person is your religion. I view the protagonist of this song, in this line at least, as someone who is kind of controlled by their dreams. They're aware that this dreaming has kind of gone out of hand they can't not worship this person even though maybe they realize that it's not healthy to do. Next lyric. This is a lyric from the song Wild Sea by Maya Iskowitz. I had not heard of this artist before so I did google the artist just to see who they were and I believe they are an Israeli artist. So we have some international artists here, I guess, which is super cool. The lyric says, I know you're kind, pledged to your eager mind. Don't march in your grin. Stay away from these fragile wings. Seems like the protagonist of this song is talking about another person. They're saying that they know this other person's kind. They know the type of person they are. They have a good read on them. Pledged to your eager mind. Let's look up the word pledged. So a pledge is more official than a promise. It's like a solemn, formal promise or commitment to do something. So there's a lot of depth to that promise. It's like very official. When you're eager to do something, you want to like really, really do it. Let's also look up the word eager. When you're eager to do something, you're keen to do it. You're impatient and anxious to do it. Being eager is not like a stable state. There is like movement. There's like kind of like anxious movement a little bit. It sounds like this person is ruled by their fast moving thoughts. Maybe they don't think through their thoughts. There's not as much depth, but there is a lot of different thoughts going on. Maybe they don't think about things before they do them. They perhaps are impulsive. I feel like that is a little bit of an unbalanced state to exist in. It's interesting that the word pledged is next to the word eager because I feel like there's a lot of stability with the word pledged. It's a very deep sort of commitment, but it's being juxtaposed with the word eager, which has like movement to it, kind of like anxious movement and impatience. So those two words are opposing, but it's interesting because it sounds like this person that's being described has a deep sort of commitment to thinking in a way that is not super balanced, that's not super like stable. Don't march in your grin. That's really, really interesting. I really enjoy that. When you march, it's formal. So we have the word pledge and the word march. Those are very formal, official sorts of things. I really enjoy that they're describing 
this person as marching in their grin. They're marching within a specific emotion. So they're doing something very like tangible, like they're marching, but they're doing that within an intangible sort of thing, within an emotion. I think of a grin as like a larger sort of smile, like grinning from ear to ear means you're smiling very, very big. There's a lot of like movement, like emotional movement associated with the person being described here. When it says grin and marching within a grin, it sounds like they're existing in their emotions in a very like committed way. And they're being told to stay far from these fragile wings. I would assume that the fragile wings are the protagonist protagonist's fragile wings. I think the protagonist is talking to someone and telling them that they know what type of person they are. That's why they need to stay away from them. This is like a self-protection, self-preservation sort of thing because this person is not that predictable. Their mind is eager. There's so much movement in their thoughts. They seem impulsive. They are committed to their emotions. You can't really predict what they're gonna do. It's not like a stable sort of movement. It's like an all over sort of movement, right? It's a little bit more chaotic. That's the word, chaotic. Wings are also really important. They're necessary for flight. If an animal's wings are hurt, that's going to affect their quality of life and whether they're able to survive. So the protagonist here seems to be in a very vulnerable state. They have fragile wings and they are concerned that this other person is going to hurt them. Not only hurt them emotionally, but hurt them in a way that could be fatal because of the word wings. This protagonist is recognizing that this other person is not like stable enough for them or maybe the protagonist like has feelings for this person. I don't know if this is like a romantic song or not. If it is a romantic song, then maybe the protagonist is scared to let the other person in because they're so different and because they're not predictable. I think whatever the exact context is, there is like an idea of self-protection for the protagonist. Next, we have a Lana Del Rey lyric. It says, if you lie down with dogs, then you'll get fleas. Be careful of the company you keep. And I believe this is from the song 24. I actually have not heard this song and I don't know the context. So I'm going off of just the lyrics here. This is very much reminiscent of the saying, birds of a feather fly together. People that are like the same type of bird are going to hang out with each other. This lyric here is kind of like a warning. It's warning you to be careful of who you hang out with because you're going to become just like them. So fleas obviously has a negative connotation associated with it. Lie down is very significant in my opinion because you're not just like hanging around with dogs, you're lying down next to them. So you're gonna be very close to them. This is also just like a more intimate sort of position to lie down with someone. You have your guard down, right? These fleas could be mental fleas or emotional fleas that are kind of going to infect the person lying down with the dogs. Also, when you're lying down, perhaps you're resting or going to sleep, so your guard is down. It's easier for you to get maybe manipulated or sucked in to the vibes of these metaphorical dogs. So that's one way to think about it. A dog that has fleas needs to be treated, so that's not a healthy state for a dog to exist in. What's being said here is that if you exist with people who maybe have things associated with them or think in certain ways or believe certain things that are not positive that are harmful if you're close with them not physically but just like emotionally and mentally you could also become like them and you may not even realize it it's also like that saying that you're the average of the for people you hang out with the most. A lot of times when you're around certain people, you really do take on their characteristics and perhaps their belief systems, their thought processes. It doesn't really matter if it's a positive one or a negative one. If you're around it long enough and if everyone around you is thinking the same way or acting the same way, it is much easier for you to start to adopt those sorts of behaviors as well. Obviously that doesn't always happen, right? Sometimes you can withstand that, but that's what this lyric is referring to. Pull up the incisors, give me two weeks, you won't recognize her. I'm not familiar with this lyric, so I'm just gonna Google like what song this is just so I can write it on here. It looks like this is a song by FKA Twigs called Two Weeks. I have not heard this song. You guys have been requesting FKA Twigs. Let me know what song you want me to do from her and I will add that to my list. So incisors referring to teeth, it's like a specific type of tooth. Incisors are your front teeth that you use to take bites of your food. I'm gonna assume that this is referring 
referring to a human. Is it pull up or pull out? Let me, I'm, I'm not gonna read the whole lyrics, but I'm gonna like command F to see if it's pull up or pull out, cause that would change the interpretation a little bit. The lyric is pull out the incisor. The fact that they're pulling out the incisors is not super positive in my opinion. I don't think that this protagonist is like a dentist performing dental work. Since incisors are used to take bites of food, they are taking away this person's ability to bite food comfortably. So that's harmful to the person. I'm also thinking a little bit more like ominously. I'm thinking about how like if they find like a body that's passed away and they don't know who it is, they're able to identify them through dental records. I don't know why, but I'm thinking about that. The fact that these teeth are taken out, it's kind of like reducing the ability Ability for someone to be able to recognize them after they've passed away. So maybe that's what the recognizing is referring to. I don't think like eating or food would really fit in with the recognize her lyrics. So that's what I think it's referring to. It's referring to like dental records. Again, I have no idea what the context of this is. I don't know the significance of two weeks. I don't know if her is referring to the protagonist. Like, are they talking about themselves or is it talking about a different person? However, I'm not getting like positive vibes from this lyric. I do think it's more metaphorical maybe, but it's like a heavy, dark sort of metaphorical vibe. This is a really interesting lyric. Without the context from the entire song and the lyrics before and after this, I'm not really able to guess like what it could metaphorically be referring to. That's all I have for that. Okay, I think I'm gonna do one more for this video. I don't want this to be like a super, super long video. I want some variety in my video lengths for you guys. I think I'm gonna do a part two because you guys submitted some really good lyrics. Feel free to submit some more down below in the comments. But if you just take off your mask, you'll find out everything's gone wrong. Now everybody's dead. I think that's Robbers by the 1975, but let me check. It is, okay. So I obviously know this song. I don't know all of the lyrics. When I listen to the 1975, honestly, I just like listen for the vibes. I don't really pay attention to the lyrics. And sometimes I can't understand what Maddie says, even though I love when British bands sing with accents. I think it's just so pleasant. I don't know the proper context. So we're just gonna analyze this kind of as a standalone part. So I am inclined to think about these lyrics more metaphorically. To me, I'm interpreting mask as kind of like a barrier between the person wearing it and the outside world. So it's kind of hiding away the identity of the person wearing it as well. So that would bring in a dissociative sort of feeling. When we talk about a mask, it could be someone purposefully separating themselves from the reality of the world, from the reality of their life. It could be something done on purpose by the person wearing the mask, or it could be unintentional. Maybe a person is kind of dissociated due to trauma, due to like intense emotional experiences. Maybe they're not even aware that they're wearing a mask. One way to think about this is that if you take off the barriers you have or the walls you have up between yourself and reality, it could go one of two ways. It could be positive where you can see what's going on and you can maybe form a closer bond to the world around you. Or it could also reveal some hard truths that things are not going well. And you know, it's saying everyone's dead. Maybe it's literal or maybe it's more metaphorical, like an emotional death. So that's one way to think about those lyrics. I will say that there is the saying, ignorance is bliss. That may be true. However, once you are confronted with reality, even if it is horrifying and difficult. It is at that point where you have power to make a decision about how to move forward and how to proceed. I think it's up to the person wearing the mask because sometimes maybe ignorance is preferred, but sometimes maybe reality is preferred. You can kind of take this into a very philosophical route and talk about the concept of ignorance and facing reality. Is there value in being ignorant? Is there value in facing the hard truth? That's like a debate that you can have that's all I have for this video. Part two will consist of lyrics you guys already submitted, but if you have more lyrics you want me to analyze as part of Lyric Roulette, comment those down below and I can include those as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it and to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!